بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, nice to meet you in the next or second session about practical issues in research and academic writing we will start today with a review of literature what is the review of literature review of literature actually is the golden chapter in the work يعني هو من اهم الشباتر اللي نعتبروها في الثيسيس why because it does provide a detailed overview about the research topic هو descriptive chapter حيعطينا وصف كامل لكل ما يتعلق بالتوبك and it is the starting point in the work in order to build up the background about the topic اذا هو الشابتر اللي حنبدا به باعتباره هو اللي حيبني النولج about the topic وحيعطينا الباك جراوند about the topic وحيوسع المدارك الخاصه بالتوبك الحقيقة هو essential chapter to make the mind mapping and create a library of the work. العملية الwriting لchapter the review of literature uh, is preferable الحقيقة and allowable to write it in terms of headings و subheadings و sub subheadings. So it is not prohibited إنك أنت تكتبها بهذا الشكل بالعكس it's quite nice. to write it in headings و subheadings و sub subheadings يعني مثلا نحن بنكتب على الفيزيكال اكتيفيتي بالتالي نعطي headings اسمها physical activity uh, مثلا وليكن في ترتيب الشابتر باعتباره هو شابتر نمبر 2 الفيزيكال اكتيفيتي 2.1 هذا headings types of physical activity 2.1.1 مثلا ال benefits of physical activity 2.1.2 2.3 مثلا اللي هو الهازاردز اوف فيزيكال اكتيفيتي وما الى ذلك ممكن within 2.1.2 اللي هن البينيفيتس اوف فيزيكال اكتيفيتي اني ندخل بسب هيدنجز اخرى اي بي سي او اني نقول 2.1.2.1 مثلا اون كارديو فاسكولار سيستم 2.1.2.2 ممكن نكتبها على ان هي اون uh, respiratory system and so on. So it is allowable to write it in headings, subheadings and sub sub headings. The importance of literature review again in a summary slide, literature review helps the research to get used uh, the related material on the study of the building background, avoid the unnecessary and intentional duplication of other researchers project. It will help to contribute to the knowledge and helps to summarize the results of the previous studies in order for you as a researcher to use them as a database for your findings and subsequently using them in the discussion and discuss by them. How to create a literature review in steps? First of all, select the topic, then search the literature about the topic, then develop your research statement and the argument, survey the literature and make a critic of the literature and then start writing the review. What are the components of the literature review? Hakika, literature review requires four stages. First of all, we need to uh, make a problem uh, statement in a formulated statement. So problem formulation, which topic or field is being examined and what are its component issue. Then making a search on the literature to find the material relevant to the subject being explored. Then make an evaluation for the data that you are searched for, determining which literature makes a significant contribution to the understanding of the topic. After that, make analysis and interpretation, discussing the finding and conclusions of pertinent literature. However, in the literature review, you need to describe the finding only, but in the discussion chapter, you need to make a discussion of the finding of the previous literature with your findings. This is an example of literature review, some paragraphs of good literature review. As you can see, researcher has also done that looks at how the police uh, find their victims. And this is a citation which we have said, we got et al. 2014 studied blah 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 and this is evidence of so this is a paragraph look at how the review is done by covering the key information from the study while critically analyzing the finding citations as well is quite necessary in doing the literature review don't write in academic writing without an evidence don't 
miss the citation in the academic writing. The use of the linking words is quite important, al-haqiqa, and the rephrasing of the statement are vital key component of this chapter. So in review of literature, don't forget two things. Using of the linking words and rephrasing of the statements. And don't forget the citation in this chapter. We have heard lots about linking words. What are the linking words? And enumerate the linking words and how they are used. Linking words actually divided to different categories. For example, we do have some linking words in addition category. And we do have linking words in sequence category. We do have some linking words in contrast, as you can see, in summary, in reasoning, for example, in conditioning. So, linking words based on the category, we are using them. For example, if we need to summarize a, 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 a statement or statements or summarize a paragraphs or summarize a thesis, so we are going to use one of these terms as a linking words as a starting of the conclusive word or a summary word. In conclusion, in summary, to sum up, to conclude, in short, lastly, finally. If we are using statements with addition, for example, we are stating something and we need to mention, for example, four things, five things, okay, in sequence, in addition. So we can use, moreover, Similarly, in addition, likewise, as well as, besides, furthermore, besides this, in the same way. If we are stating something which is followed by another thing, so there is a consequence of condition. So we can use eventually, consequently, thereby, therefore, as a result, then. So these are Examples of the linking words in addition, in consequence, in summary. We do have another linking words in the contrast. So contrast are opposing, the statement opposing each other. So we can say however, and we can say in contrast, despite, although, in spite of, whereas, nonetheless. So based on the category, based on the meaning of the statements, or the paragraph that we are writing, we are using the linking words. And the coming slides shows you different linking words based on different categories, as you can see. These are cause and effect, contrast, emphasis, addition, time, comparison, as you can see here. This is another slide, which includes summary again, examples, contrast, time, result, place, comparison, and here, as you can see as well, another categories which includes different linking words that are used in the academic writing. What are the different sources of information? Different sources of information are books, journals, chapter from books, websites. Why we do need to know that? Because making the reference list is different between four of them. So we do need, from where we do take the information first, and we do need to, to know the style, how to write the reference list that we did take from book, for example, or the journal, or chapter from book, or a website. What are the methods of collection of the information? For example, this is a practice when you have collected and evaluated your information, what are the elements of the checklist that you need to evaluate while you are collecting the information? So, the answer is there is a checklist to be used, including information should be relevant to the topic, information should be relevant to the aims, information should be relevant to the reader, Information should be up to date. Information should be an accurate, correctly referenced, supported by evidence, and it should be necessary and related to the topic. Now, let us start with the title of a work, title of a project. 
What are the main considerations of title? A title, first of all, should be very clear and should be concise, relevant, and shouldn't, shouldn't be similar to another work. Secondly, we can use a subtitle because it is a good way to be provided and it can provide more details about the contents. Thirdly, it should be the most prominent words on the task. Now, when you a title page, a title, it should be the most prominent words. It shouldn't be hidden. Yani, hatta no al khat, or the size of the text. It should be the most prominent. Is the most obvious one. Ma ykunish asghar min baqi al information on the title page li hana arfa fi ma baad. It should be as precise as possible and contain some key words about the topic. Prevalence of the diabetes among obese person. This, this is a title which indicates that we are checking for the diabetes among obese population, which is completely different from the prevalence of obesity among diabetes. In this one, the latest one, we are checking of the diabetes or check for the diabetes among the obese population. Oh, sorry, we are check for obesity among the diabetic population. So the terms, the words that we are using, the title should indicate and should reflect the topic, should reflect that about the topic and should give us an indication about the text. It should reflect the general field of the paper, which means, in other words, it should reflect the text, it should reflect the contents of the work. Example, return to elite football after the COVID-19 lockdown. So, as we said, here we do expect on this paper that we are going to read about how to return to the football after the infection by COVID. Here, infectious disease and football lessons not only from COVID. In this paper, we are talking or we are expecting to read about some other infectious disease in the football, which is not the COVID only. We do have another infectious disease. So the title and the key words in the title and the words in the title reflects the contents of the topic and reflects the expectation or our expectation about the uh, reading and what we are going to see inside the text. We talked about title page. What is the title page? Any written project having a title page and this title page should tell the reader or anybody what is the report is about. There are certain con composition or certain elements should be included in the title page. A good title page will include the following information. First, the title of the project or the work. Second, the name and the logos of the organization who authorized the report. For example, as we say, LIMU, for example. But where in the LIMU, Faculty of the Medicine, for example. So, Faculty of Medicine, Libyan International Medical University. So, this is the logos should be inserted in the title page. The name of the author of the authors and their positions, if they are students, for example, and we can add the student number for the students here and the date of the issue. Why we do insert the date of the issue in the title page? Because you are not responsible for any information after the final date of the issue of this report, after its correction, after its revision. So the date of the issue is quite important for this reason. Following the title page, we should see the abstract or the summary. What is the abstract? Abstract briefly summarizes the context, research aim or question methods and materials and main findings and conclusion. It should inform the reader about the highlights of the work. So abstract giving highlights about the work. It has two functions actually. 
It doesn't provide a precise of what the recipient is about to read or has just read. And secondly, to provide an outline of the report of the recipient is not going to read the entire report. So this slide is quite important. And based on this slide, you can make a mind map how to write an abstract. So abstract has two functions again. First, to provide a precise of what the recipient is about to read. يعني حيعطي معلومات على الريدر شن ماشي بيقرا. Second, حيعطيني outline of the report in whole and giving a reader some idea if the reader is not interested to go throughout all the report so he or she can understand everything from an abstract. So, it does highlight background, aim, method, results, main conclusion. It should be very highly concise. Shouldn't be more than one page. The usual number for academic written task of abstracts, 250 up to 300 words. And you shouldn't introduce any matter which is not covered within the text of the report. So let me ask you quick questions based on the previous slide. What is the first paper to be read but the last paper to be written. The answer is the abstract. And how to write an abstract and what is the layout of its presentation? We do have two layout ways of presentations. This is the first one and this is the second one. Again, this is the first one and this is the second one. The difference between the first one and the second one this is what we call structured abstract. We do have heading of introduction, and as you can see, is the background which indicates the importance of the topic and why, okay, this important is, why this topic is important, and here the objective, so why we do perform the study, and this is a description of the method, okay, and these are the important results that we are going to talk about in the abstract and here's the conclusion. So this is structured abstract and as you can see here on the top, this is the title of the journal and this is all the details of the journal where this abstract has been published and this is the title of the article and these are the authors of this article. This abstract is non-structured abstract. However, all of the information that we gave here in, from introduction, objective, method, results, conclusion are here, but link it together without using the heading. For example, behavioral research has provided blah, 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 up to here, okay, Okay, is the background and the significance of the study. Then, we begin a systemic study union. From here is starting the method. So from here, starting the method. And here are some results. And as you can see, okay, the conclusion at the end of this study. So, or at the end of the abstract. What is preferable? Structured or non-structured abstract. Actually, in academic writing, structured abstract is more preferable than non-structured abstract for the writer and the reader as well. Coming now to the lists, starting with the list of contents. It is an essential component of any scientific work. It should be on separate sheet. It should list the various sections of the report in order in which they appear. يعني لما نجي نقول والله نحن عندنا ريفيو في الترايتشر صفحة ثلاثين معناه it should be inside the text page number 30 in the review of the literature for example we are talking about obesity صفحة 32 it should be in the text صفحة 32 so they should be identical the headings on the contents page should be identical to those used in the text and the headings on the contents must be identical with appropriate page and paragraph number along the side. 
and page numbering should be simple and consistent. This is a model, this is an example of list of contents. As you can see, ordinary number is started from introduction. And as you can see as well, there is a use here for subheadings, as well here in number four. So this is the heading, and these are subheadings, and the page number here should be identical with the text. Be aware about the alignment. Be aware about the layout of the presentation. This is another page, but the difference here is these numbers, the Roman numbers, which is different from the ordinary number. The Roman number, as you can see, we use them in acknowledgement, abstract, table of content, list of tables, list of, and nomenclature or abbreviations. The ordinary number starts from introduction. This is a rule. This is a rule, and you shouldn't forget that. As you can see here, there is heading, subheading. Here we do have subheadings, and in this subheadings, as you can see, we do have sub subheadings, which consistent with the specific page number as well. This is another example of the list of contents as well. These are the Roman numbers, and this is an ordinary number in this slide. So this is a Roman number, this is an ordinary number, and as you can see, the topics are listed. Coming to the list of figures and list of tables, we do have two ways. Whatever chapter, figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four, figure five, figure six. Or we do have here figure 1.1, 2.1, 3.1, 3.2. What that means? It does mean in chapter 1, we do have just one figure here. In chapter 2, we do have just one figure. In chapter 3, we do have two figures. Figure 1, figure 2, which followed the number of the chapter. So these are the two ways to present the figures and similarly present the tables. This is another way, as you can see, which is similar. And don't forget the page number in the presentation. And it's completely similar to the tables. Glossary, it is necessary when you have used a good deal of specialized or technical vocabulary, make sure your definitions are up to date and precise. List the words alphabetically. Don't forget that the glossary should be listed alphabetically. And it should be inserted at the beginning, not at the end. This is an example of common medical abbreviation. For example, here, as you can see, uh, congenital heart disease, congestive heart failure, chest x-ray, cerebrovascular accident, cardiovascular, cardiopulmonary uh, resuscitation, DVT, for example, which is deep vein thrombosis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or lung disease, COPD or COLD. Coming now to the ethics and the study forms. If you are involved in the study at the Liberty Clinic about the complication of hyperlipidemia on various systems, what are the essential forms you do need in order to conduct this work? Four main forms we do need, actually. Ethically. When we say ethically, we talk about the ethical work. First of all, information sheet for the candidate. لازم الكانديد اللي بيشاركوا في الاستدي يكون عندهم معلومات which by it thereby can give their consent or refuse to participate عن طريق هذه المعلومات والله يا يوافقوا يا يرفضوا الانخراط في الدراسة secondly you need to make a risk assessment for thirdly you need to apply for ethical approval and having an ethical approval to conduct the study particularly if you are using human subjects. Then you need to have a consent form. I'm not going to go to the details, face-to-face -face and practical manipulation, but information sheet, risk assessment form, ethical approval, and consent form. This is, for example, an example of risk assessment form. For example, 
and this is a general risk assessment form for example عندنا والله activity job فيها collecting sorting cleaning drying ironing شنو الهازارد اللي فيها back and upper limb pain هذا شنو حيسبب حيسبب discomfort in the body by كيف تتحكم how to make a control of this risk training provided to the workers before they start the work so for example if you are performing a study on a laboratory exercise physiology lab وعندك بلط لكتيت سامبلز حتى خذن من الاير لوب شنو الريسك هنا الريسك والله انفكشن دونت سي ان هذه والله فيري سمبل نو ات از بينتريشن تو ذا بودي سو بينتريشن تو ذا بودي سو ات كرييتس انجري ات كرييتس انفكشن هاو داز be controlled or how it's going to be controlled wallahi using sterilized material expert matalan bidir wallahi exercise physiology experiment to reduce maximum oxygen consumption or the heart rate on a bike or a treadmill شنو الهازاردز اللي موجود ممكن والله فيزو فيجل ساينكوب باي شنو الكنترول بتاعك والله حندير هيلث اسسمنت كويشنير وحندير ميديكال تشيك اب باي وحندير اي سي جي ويتش ويل بي كونسلتد باي ا فيزيشن اور كارديولوجيست وحيكون عندي الفيرست ايدرز لايسنس فيرست ايدر ان ذا معمل ذيس از ذا ريسك اسسمنت اند ويتش شود بي امبورتنت اند ذا كانديديت اللي اصلا داخل معاك في القصه هذه شود نو ايفري ثينج بيفور ستارت to give you the consent or to refuse to participate. This is another risk assessment form and this is Cambridge, University of Cambridge risk assessment form in the research. And this is example of research consent. Methodology, so nearly to finish this session, material and methods you should enumerate and you should include in the material and method chapter these elements. First of all, you need to enumerate the location of the study area. Then you need to mention the interval of the period of the study. Then you should give the details about the participants, age, sex, occupation, education, and other information relevant to the study. And then you, know, you do need to mention the inclusion and exclusion criteria and why you did make that and how. If there is basic standards or some standards you have make the inclusion and exclusion. And the type of the study, you should explain what is the type of the study and what are the tools that you have used and what are the procedures that you have performed. And you need to mention trade form, يعني أو trade name. يعني for example, أنت استخدمت ماشين في CBC analysis. الماشين بتاع CBC analysis لازم تذكر بلد الصنع, لازم تذكر اسم الماشين, لازم تذكر تاريخ الصنع. So trade name should be named, the date بتاع أو the date of manufacturing. The protocol it should be explained in all steps in details, and you should make data analysis such as the procedure will package used. مثلا استخدمت سي في اس بي اس اس سو يو نيد تو سي ويتش فيرجن يو هاف يوزد ترو اور فولس ميثودولوجي شابتر از ريتن ان ريفيو ستادي ريسيرش وورك از ات ترو اور فولس اي ويل ليت يو اكزامين يور سيلف اون ذات واي وي شود رايت ذات ذا انسر اوف براكتس 16 ميثودولوجي شابتر يس از ريتن ان ذا ريفيو ستادي ريسيرش وورك Why? Because we do need to consider sources, journals and websites, so we do need to trust the information that we have read. Second thing, we do need to know the keywords that have been used in this search. And we do need as well to know whether the search that was made about this topic has been limited to the humans or both the humans and animals. And while you are writing, you should consider that in the writing. You should write about the sources, you should write about the keywords, you should write about the limitation of the work, whether it is for humans and animals. And how many full texts you have used, and how many abstracts, and how many in a pure English language you have used, and how many abstract have been translated from other language to English language. Why we should mention the translation 
And why we should consider that? Because it might be the fault in the translation and you are not blame it, and you are not going to be blamed for that. Thanks very much for your attendance for this session and hope to meet you in the last one, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.